good. Uh, well, really, um, I suppose it was always part of the, that was always part of the, the intention of the film, was to kind of use those songs, use that music and that styling. Although I don't think we ever realised, certainly visually, that it would come out quite as garish. We didn't remember it being as quite as garish as it's come out in the film. There's a scene in the Sixth Form Common Room where it all comes to, to like an 80s nostalgia fest head. Which um, is like the Midnight Cowboy freakout scene. Exactly, too. exactly. And it was one of those things where, um, where it's far more surreal and, um, and uh, colourful than we ever, ever experienced in our own lives. But... I think you needed it to be there. It needed to be a sort of hedonistic version of reality, a uh, sort of teenage version. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with how it's worked. And Susie and the Banshee seems to complement that, that theme. Shall I continue? <laughs> I was just going to say, it was sort of that, that, that scene was... We were never, you know, before you got into the sixth form, which was at the age of about 18, uh, you weren't, they always had a special area. They had the sixth form common room, and you weren't allowed in it. So we used to think it was amazing. You know, it was it was. It, so what the scene in the film where the Susie and the Banshees music plays, it's it's how we thought it was mm -hmm. inside that room, prior to actually getting in it. So when we did actually finally get into the sixth form, and you got access to that room, it was an incredible disappointment. It was just like a dartboard and maybe like a kettle, and you could make tea, and that was about it. But it was definitely so we could really go to town with that because it was how we thought it was going to be and that's I suppose you know the, the whole Susie and the Banshees and that that why we were playing that music and there's all that goes towards it. Mm. 